Hello, and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with attorney Brian D. Lerner. I hope you can see me okay on this video. The light is coming in uh, from the top, and it's it's a little unclear, but but hopefully you can hear me at least. Um, I think I would talk a little bit about uh, conservator conservatorship, and I, I've done some videos on the subject before, uh, but I would like to um, go a little bit more into uh, the conservatorship itself and how to get it and so forth. And generally speaking, uh, the conservatee, which is the person who needs the conservatorship, uh, generally has some type of incapacity which makes it so they cannot uh, designate who the conservator should be and cannot sign documents to allow someone to be a conservator. So, you know, there's a couple of ways of taking care of this. Uh, first of all, it's always good to have your paperwork done uh, prior to uh, when it becomes necessary to have a conservator. So you could have a will or a trust or, you know, whatever estate document you prepare, but make sure that in those estate documents you state if it becomes necessary that a conservator be appointed. I want this person to be my first choice for a conservator and I want this person to be my second choice and possibly I want this person to be my third choice. and because there's so much uh, adversity and, and hate many times goes among uh, family members trying to grab everything they can, um, a lot of times you might also want to say, I do not want this person to be my conservator. Can you imagine if, for example, you had a brother um, you know, or something, you know, some family uh, who you haven't spoken with in 30 years who uh, has done nothing but cause you misery, and the moment you become incapacitated and unable to make your own decisions, that person jumps forward and goes, oh, I'll be the conservator, and then, you know, cleans your estate up. So sometimes it's just as important to say who you don't want to be the conservator as who you do want to be the conservator. So given that, uh, you're able to uh, have that done at least initially in your documents, uh, but when it becomes time to actually have a conservator appointed, uh, normally you're going to need a court order. So normally <laughs> somebody's going to have to go forward into court and make the various motions to be appointed as the conservator. And then, of course, your documents, which you designated who you want to be, uh, the conservator will be a lot easier in which to, um, you know, be appointed uh, given that you specifically named them in the first place. Now, when... Uh, the conservator is appointed, of course, they're going to be able to do all kinds of uh, decision-making items, which you might not, uh, which obviously you can't do yourself, but you, uh, you know, it's not something somebody normally wants to do, like, for example, uh, you know, put you in hospice or uh, get medical treatments for you that you might not want, uh, or y you can't designate at this point whether you do or don't. So, you know, the conservator does have a lot of power over what you can and cannot do. And obviously, if you have some issues with the matter, be sure you do your advanced health care directive designating what you do and don't want. Be sure when you designate the conservator, you say what you do and don't want as, as best as you can so that it is uh, more plausible to make it so that your wishes will be followed. So... If you like the video, click like, subscribe. You can call my office, get a free consultation anywhere in California, uh, let you know what can be done and the costs and so forth. And there will be more on the coming videos. Thank you.